Good morning. And it's Michelle here at Hesketh Emporium and Handmade. And I thought I'd just give you a quick whiz around what I'm doing this morning. So in final preparation for going to uh, receive my MBE down at Windsor Castle, I am sewing buttonholes, which is the final job on the sewing machine for Mark's dress shirts. The reason I've got my Bernina 1000 special is because I specifically want to show you how to sew a buttonhole on this machine. It has a buttonhole selector here, which you set from one through to uh, six, and it does each step for you automatically. It's a mechanical process using cams and stacks inside the machine here. You don't have to touch the stitch width selector as it does that for you. And the only thing you need to do is to adjust your stitch length. So in this case, I put mine onto about a 0.5 and that I find is the nicest density on my buttonholes. So I'm using little white buttons. It's on a pink stripe and white striped shirt and there's one buttonhole I made previously. Sorry, that light is an LED light and it flashes in when it, you get too close. So what I do is I have a little strip of fabric, the length of the buttonhole placket, and I mark the distances between my buttonholes. So from the collar stand here, that one goes into the center of the band and into the center of the collar stand. And then I place my button on top of that, like so. And I just do a little line, once I've got the center line, I do a little line on each side of the button, east, west, or north, south, whichever direction you're going. So for the collar stand, you always have the buttonhole going horizontally when you're wearing the shirt. But on the buttonhole band itself here, you have them vertically and the reason for that is because there's a lot more strain on this buttonhole here and when it pulls towards the neck along the neck here it is stronger here than if you did a buttonhole in the vertical like this you would find the buttonhole pulling and it would gape so that's why you do that it's a it's, it's a stronger buttonhole and that's why you find them on the bottom of waistcoats and jackets and things like that sometimes so now I've marked all of my little X's, which is the distance between buttons. So from the top to the first button, I do seven centimeters. And then between each button, center to center on each button is nine centimeters. Then I use a little bit of stabilizer. This is a tear off stabilizer. And I pop my button on top of that the same way. And I do a little in, um, I'm using a friction pen, which comes off with steam. And then I mark my buttonhole size over there like that. I've uh, pinned the stabilizer in place today only because I'm going to have to try and do this single-handedly. I've got no cameraman. And so I'm holding that in place in the hope that I can do this single-handedly. No difference to the needle, a nice sharp needle for wovens. Uh, my usual isocord thread which is polyester thread, and uh, I don't adjust anything else on the machine. I simply put this onto buttonhole mode here and adjust this to 0 0.5, and then you're ready to go. So I'm gonna pop you onto a stand and hope you can see this and it doesn't jump about too much and I can get my hands into the picture frame. So I take the fabric up to the machine and this is the regular foot actually on this machine it's it's not a particular foot so it, this machine is very forgiving and I'm going to hold my threads or push down on my tails because I don't want it to knot underneath and then I turn my hand wheel so that the needle goes into the fabric it prevents knotting and in this case I can make sure it's absolutely on my little first red line, which it is. So it might be a bit noisy, but here goes. So I'm on setting one at the moment. 
purely mechanical and it's up to you how long you make your buttonhole. You have to stop the foot of the machine when you get to the length you need. So you have to concentrate because every now and again I do something and I've gone over the, um, the length that I need. I have to unpick it. But generally these make fantastic buttonholes, this machine. So here goes. So it's doing a tight zigzag all the way down the left side of my buttonhole. And then I stop when I get to the little red mark. I'm going to now turn my hand dial. Just let me turn you around. I'm going to turn the dial to position number two. And that's now changed the setting there. So then we go back here. It's going to reverse now back to the beginning on the right side of what it's already done. I then change my buttonhole selector to three and it's going to do the bar across the top again you can do the bar as many times as you like you don't want it too thick uh, but it needs to be enough to prevent the buttonhole from tearing open and just to maintain the buttonholes shape nicely so then we go on to number four and it's going to zigzag down the right hand side And that goes over the row of reversed straight stitches you got earlier. Change your selector to number five and it'll do the bottom of your buttonhole bar. Again, however many you like, turn to six and now it's anchoring the buttonhole. This is your personal choice. I go all the way down the, the buttonhole till I get back to the first buttonhole bar. And that's where I stop. Lift your presser foot, pull your work away from the machine. And then I use my lovely Wilkinson snips and I snip both top threads. And I'll tell you why now. Then I flip it over and I snip my two bottom threads. And I give them a very gentle pull when I do this. The reason for that is you cut the top one first because that's the public side. And then when you pull them to the back with these bottom bobbin threads, if there's a little tail on the top surface of your public side, it actually pulls them through to the back, which makes it super neat. So I've clipped that off, get rid of the thread. And now I can just tear off the stabilizer. So tear it off. You have a choice to put the stabilizer on the top or the bottom. I do mine at the bottom on this fabric because I just did a little test and that looked a little bit better. And there you have an absolutely impeccable buttonhole. Semi-manual because the machine did all the settings for you. But you've done the, uh, you know, the length, things like that and adjusted the width. So that is how... You do a buttonhole on the Bernina 1000 Special. So thank you for watching, everybody. I have got another four buttonholes to do. This shirt required eight buttonholes down the front band and two on each um, cuff, one on each side of the cuff, because Mark's going to be wearing these with uh, cufflinks. So he doesn't need buttons on the cuffs. That saves me doing two buttons on every shirt. That's uh, not bad. So have a wonderful day. Any questions, let me know. See you soon. Bye.